We had an amazing time here. The level of students, I think, is really high. They had great questions. We got to hear three of the groups perform, which were all fantastic. Um, and so it's, it's really nice, you know, when you come into a city and you just do a gig and you leave, you often don't get to see much of the city, don't get to interact much with the communities. So it's special to me to get a chance to meet all the students here and to get a sense of what people are up to and, and the younger generation of musicians coming up. For me, it's the same. I was very happy to meet them all. And I, I do say the level is really high. I'm a great improviser. Um, Sylvie and I met in New York City just through mutual friends in the community. And um, I'd admired her playing for many years before I actually got a chance to work with her. Um, so it was a special collaboration for me. And yeah, we've had this duo five, six years. Um, we started it, we did a gig, we felt it really worked. So we both just kept bringing compositions, doing performances. We've done two records now, our first record, Crop Circles, and our second record, Searching for the Disappeared Hour. The first album, we did it at my house. So it was really like, uh, we recorded like, kind of, it's a kind of homemade. And we didn't really wrote pieces especially for our duo. And then the second album, we, we wrote pieces especially I wrote for Mary, she wrote it for me, and and, uh, and I'm, yeah, I'm very excited how it's, this duo is developing. There's something nice about, you know, working together over a long period of time, because, I mean, there's, there's the excitement of a brand new collaboration, of course, but then when you've been working with the same group for several years, you really start to develop something and you get to know each other's sound, you can almost finish each other's sentences, um, so it becomes, really great just to to get more deeply into something. I first heard Carla Bley when I was in high school and I discovered her, you know, as, as female musicians in a, a very male-dominated jazz world, when you see a, like a strong female composer write that, like that writing a tune, which is just, it's a standard really, and just so beautiful. And then from there discovering all of her other work. And yeah, she was really a role model for me, um, even though it wasn't the same instrument. I think. So many of us these days, we listen to everything. You know, I listen to a, a lot of different types of music. I'm, I'm interested in discovering new music all the time. We live in New York, we go to a ton of concerts, check out music, and just really could be anything. I love to be surprised, you know, when you hear something that surprises you. The older you get, it becomes harder to be surprised, I think, but it still happens. So I think, you know, just we try to remain open and check out all kinds of stuff. You know, when I was younger, I didn't realize how technique is important. And I think, try to find a teacher who can really study technique, and maybe only technique. So after it gives you all the tools to be able to express whatever you have in your head, give the tools, you don't have to say, oh, I cannot play fast because I have problem, how do I do that? So, of course, you have to play skills, arpeggio, have a, maybe you have a teacher who just do skills on arpeggio and you figure out, or maybe, you know, whatever, you want to do extended technique, really study it and take, take the time really to do that. Sometimes you have one teacher and you, you, you know, teach you bebop, and, but they don't know how to, so maybe they themselves don't have a great technique. So figure out, maybe I need a classical guy or a person, classical teacher who can teach me, I'm talking more about piano, of course, but who can teach me Oh, I don't care. I don't want any technique, but be aware of that. Yeah, I think I would agree. I mean, what Sylvie's talking about really is depth, right? Depth of study. And you see, um, I think it's very common for people to want to skim the surface of a million different things, um, which is good in a sense if you want to learn a little about a lot of things. But I do agree that finding a focus, you know, what are you interested in and, and really taking your time, because it takes time. You know, you can't learn music from like a how-to YouTube video. You know, you really have to go in depth. And I think that's also difficult to do when you're in school because you have so many classes and you have assignments, you have to learn this and learn that. So what I would say is make a note of the things you really want to go back to. So when you're done with school and you have more time to focus, to really focus and take your time learning things, um, 
I would also say the best thing you can do while you're in school is be open-minded. Like, this is your time to learn, so don't decide I only like this one narrow kind of music and that's all I want to do. Maybe you're not super into certain types of music, but take the class anyway, check it out. This is probably one of your only chances to really, you know, to, to learn about it. And so I think being as open-minded as possible, knowing that there's plenty of time to focus later, I think you can benefit a lot. And I think you learn a lot also from what you don't like. But if you're too close to it, you're not gonna have the opportunity to even figure that out. Don't be afraid of failing. You know, try to, to experiment, like, like we, if you have a gig, an audition, just try it. Something you didn't, don't try to do the same thing over and over. Try to experiment. <laughs>